Today on No Greater Love with Pastor Jeff Kramer. And here in this particular case, Abram got tied up in this place. Again, Terah, his father, his dad means delay. He's listening to an earthly dad as opposed to his heavenly father. And there's, there, there can be a mixture there within our life. And, and we don't want that. We, we, we want to make sure that we're dialing our ears into what our Heavenly Father has to, to tell us, what our Heavenly Father has to say to us, and, and, and why you and I are not given the intricacies within this story as to why God said this and why God wanted him to do that. We have our own stories. We have our own families, and we can see those relationships, again, within our own families, those ones that pull us back and those ones that help us to go forward. Welcome to No Greater Love with Pastor Jeff Kramer. Thousands of years ago, there was a man named Abram who was living a normal life in a secular culture. This man experienced many good things, but he was also familiar with pain and discouragement. One day, God interrupted this man's life and promised to do something special with him, but he had to leave everything he knew and follow God by faith. Abram was an unlikely candidate to receive favor from God, and yet he would become an example of faith for us to pattern our lives after. Throughout his life, we see God consistently giving promises of blessing to Abram, problems of faltering in faith, and praise of God's faithfulness. These are the common experiences we all wrestle with in a life of faith, believing God, but also wrestling with the weakness of our flesh. Let's join Pastor Jeff in a message titled, Common Experiences. As we move into the end of chapter 11, you know, we, we navigated through some genealogies last time, and, and now we come to the end of chapter 11. Uh, we have a little bit of the family tree there, but the scope of what is taking place is, is that God is narrowing the story all the way down to one man at this point. He's coming down to Abraham. Um, again, in, in these uh, verses that we'll look at, in these chapters that we'll look at tonight, He's referred to as Abram, okay? But please realize Abram, you know, in chapter 17, he becomes Abraham at that name change, okay? At 99 years old, God finally, you know, completes whatever he's doing in that segment, and, and he goes from Abram to Abraham. And so uh, just, just, just realize, as I, as I say Abraham or Abram, if I get both of those names mixed up here tonight, just realize we're talking about the same guy, okay? Uh, and so as is, is, is as the story whittles all the way down to one man, down to Abraham, you know, we, we've got an unlikely candidate here. Uh, this guy, I mean, Abram is receiving from God a call, a promise, uh, it not, not only uh, to become, um, you know, his descendants, um, to become as, the, as many as the sands of the seashore, but also to inherit a land. And so Abram was that guy, right, in Ur of the Chaldeans in Mesopotamia. I mean, he was a guy that worshiped like moon gods, and, you know, he was in a happening area there in, in Ur of the Chaldeans. Uh, you know, some, some commentators, some uh, historical commentators say that yeah, that was the area where the hot tub was originally created all the way back then. Whether it is or is not, I don't know. It's a fun little story, though. Uh, uh, but, but just realize that that part of the world, I think you and I would call it Iraq today, right in that region there, uh, Persian Gulf, Iraq, all that, uh, that it was a very happening uh, area. I mean, very sophisticated, very advanced for that time. And, 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 and God selects one man, and he begins to do his work there. Uh, we saw the, the, the dismal failure of what took place at the Tower of Babel at the, at the beginning of this chapter, and God wasn't so happy with that. And he spread and he sent people throughout uh, the world. He confused the languages and, and he broke people up. And so as we come to this point, uh, this man, God is choosing to re reveal himself to this man. He's choosing to give him a promise. So the backdrop, let's begin with the backdrop, okay? Uh, Genesis 11, pick it up in verse number 31. Take a look at this. It says, and Terah, he took his son Abram, and his grandson Lot, uh, the son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, uh, his son Abram's wife. And they went out with them from Ur the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan. And they came to Haran, and they dwelt there. 
And so the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. Father, bless your word to our hearing tonight. Bring your word alive and speak to us in this present moment. And uh, we ask this by faith in the name of Jesus and all God's people said. Amen. So the backdrop of, of Abram's response to God. Uh, we're, we're picking this up here at the end of chapter 11. Again, as we, know, as we go through this, I just want you to key in on this. I'll develop the thread a little bit here, but I just want you to key on this. Verse number 31, it says, and Terah. Well, who in the world is Terah? You guys know that? We just read it. Terah is Abram's what? His father. But what does his name mean? And maybe you've got a notation there within your Bible or something. His name means delay. Now, there was a promise. There was something that God was doing, that God was speaking to Abram. And, 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 and look ahead now for just a moment to chapter 12, verse number one. It says, now the Lord, watch this, very, very careful. The Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. So understand what we are looking at here. We're seeing Terah there. He's the father. God had a plan. God had a call. You know, uh, we, we, I think we did this last time. Uh, maybe I'm mistaken. But we realized that when we're reading here at the beginning, beginning of Genesis 12 and 1, that, that this is almost like a, a, a second overshadowing of what the call was. It's, it's, it's almost like it's being reiterated here. Uh, we developed that a little bit when we were in Acts chapter 7. Is like, I think I kind of mirrored those two together here a little bit last week, and we, we get more of a, a flavorful description. Maybe I'll take you there in just a second. Uh, but, but as we go through this, I just want you to understand that, that, that Terah, Abram's father, his name means delay. And this becomes important to the storyline as we find in Abram's life because it covers you know, somewhere, you know, uh, 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 in this segment before we get to the name change, we're covering about 45, 50 year segment of time frame as we look at his life. And what is, is taking place here is that the progress of delay is so funny that God has a way of, of, of weaving in the intricacies within a narrative here that, that, that point out and highlight some of those things along the way. These are the, known as the wasted years in Haran, and that delay is coming from Terah, coming from the, uh, Abram's father. And it's very interesting to, to think about that. Why? Why is that so interesting? Well, because we come back to ourselves. And when we come back to ourselves, when we start surveying the terrain of our life and our walk with Christ, you know, maybe we've had it in the past or maybe we're dealing with this in the present. And that is, is that there are relationships that need to be set aside within our life. Why? So that we can obey God in the present. Not all of our relationships are going to translate and, 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 and stay in place, if you will, as we follow Jesus. And, and, and even this, this, this relationship of, of the familial relationship right here. You remember as Jesus spoke to that within the Gospels as well. You know, who is my mother? Who is my father? Who are my, my brothers and sisters and so forth, right? And Jesus said this. He says, uh, you know, I think Matthew says that, you know, he, he, he kind of looks around and points to the crowd. Those that are doing the will of my father. Very interesting. And, and, and here in this particular case, Abram got tied up in this place. Again, Terah, his father, his dad means delay. He's listening to an earthly dad as opposed to his heavenly father. And there's, there, there can be a mixture there within our life. And, and we don't want that. We, we, we want to make sure that we're dialing our ears into what our heavenly father has to, to tell us, what our heavenly father has to say to us. And, and, and why you and I are not given the intricacies within this story as to why God said this and why God wanted him to do that. We have our own stories. We have our own families. And we can see those relationships, again, within our own families, those ones that pull us back and those ones that help us to go forward. I find this interesting. Let's take a look at the screen here together for just for a moment. Uh, Mark chapter six, verse number four. This is NLT for us. Take a look at this. It says, then Jesus told them, quote, a prophet is honored everywhere except where? In his hometown and where? Among his relatives and his own family. Right, you know, so you go from the, the bigger picture of your tribe to the smaller picture maybe of your own household. 
Mm, it's very interesting. When, when, when he puts that there, like I said, we're not trying to drill down on some crazy doctrine. We're just making a note of, of the struggles that happen along the way. And we're realizing, but be it uh, Old Testament right here or New Testament, that God has a way of doing something. And whatever he was doing here with Abram, that, that the promise that he was calling him out into it required him to do something, perhaps that was very uncomfortable, especially in a patriarchal family. Why? Because who was a dad in a patriarchal family? I mean, hey, listen, um, the buck stops with him. And, 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 and God wanted Abram to get his marching orders from his heavenly father, not his earthly father. And he knew that the tendency within the culture or within his own, you know, within the own veins of his own heart would draw him to a place to where, where God's voice would be muted. And I think that's the important part for us to understand. Again, we're just kind of crossing over this. You know, we're not, we're not creating doctrine here. We're just looking at the story. <laughs> that's all we're doing. It's just, it's just a story of the past. Now, the scripture indicates this to us. It does tell us a few things about our natural families. And our natural families can actually reject the changes that God has made within us. Well, how do we know that? Well, here's what the Bible says. Take a look at this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, NLT on this one. It says this. It says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Let's stop right there for just a second. That's hard for some of our family members to realize that's hard for them to understand. Listen, I've been, a, I've been a Christian now. I've been a follower of Jesus Christ for 30 years. And when I go back to my early 20s here, and, and, and I realize that the reputation that I developed within my family in adolescence, teenage years, right, and in my early 20s and all that stuff, man, I was a wild child. And some of my family to this present hour can't understand. They, they're still like watching. It's like, okay, he's going to fall at some point. I know. And meanwhile, they're going to the grave one by one, and I'm still, I'm still standing. Go Jesus, right? But we're a new person. Our old life is gone. A new life has begun. Now, I know that's not a familiar, uh, I know that is a familiar verse to you. I just want to bring the, the amplification through that because we're looking at Abram, and we're looking at what God did with him. Now, Abram was delayed in this. And this delay, again, your Bible might say wasted years in Haran. He was delayed by his dad. And that delay that that happened there was somewhere between 15 and 25 years. I'm not sure exactly which one it is because I don't have a verse that that, that gives us the the exact thing. But we do have the generality and the understanding of being able to track the age of Terah and kind of where he went and and where he ends up expiring at, you know, uh, was it 205 years and all that. All that to say is this, is that when when, when, when uh, Abram responded to God, he was somewhere between 50 and 60 years old. So that delay that we can, sh- we can nail down and we can be very specific about in, uh, in Haran, you know, that delay from his dad, Terah, b- being in this spot and the wasted years in Haran, he was supposed to leave Ur the Chaldeans, go up over the Fertile Crescent, come right back down into Canaan. That's Israel, by the way, Canaan, Israel. And, and, and there was a delay well, what does that delay look like? Uh, look, look in your Bible for just a second. Genesis 12, verse number four. I'll read it to you, okay? It says, so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him. Watch, I just want you to catch the phraseology. Had spoken. Okay, this is, this is a response that, that, that he's responding to something that has already been done in the annals of time. In, in, prior, it's already been there. God has already done this. And, 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 and Lot went with him. And how old was Abraham at this point? And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed Haran. So there was that long expanse of time, somewhere between 15 and 25 years, because they left as a family, Ur of the Chaldeans, Mesopotamia, same area, and they went straight up kind of in a north and a little bit of a western direction there. And that delay was, was, uh, um, again, he didn't leave Haran to come down. His dad died, and, and he was about 75 years old at that point. In fact, the text just said he was 75 years old. So there was a long delay. Let's do Hebrews 11, 8, and 9. Let's see if we can get that on the screen for a second. Let me read this to you here. Here's coming out of Hebrews, two verses. It says, by faith, Abram, Abraham, okay, obeyed when he was called to go out. Notice something here. We're in Hebrews. I'm going to touch it. This is nice. Hebrews and 11. Hebrews in chapter 11. What is that? That's the halls of faith. And the way that God is, is, is recording and remembering the details of the past is not the failures here, but it's the success. It's the work that God completed. And now we refer to him not as Abram, but as Abraham, the man that inherited the promise, the guy whose life was changed. And at 99 years old, 
God completed that segment of what he was doing over the scope of about 45, 50 years. It's all coming together. He's in the land, and guess what happens? Isaac comes, right, at this time. And so, uh, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive. Guess what? Would receive. That's, that, that's a future tense. That's a walk of faith. Abraham is the father of faith, as we know, right? And, and, and we get to see his struggles over these next several chapters as to how this all plays out. He would receive it as an inheritance. And he went out. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> when I walk by faith, shouldn't everything be so simple? Shouldn't I always see the glowing lights and, you know, and maybe the steps that are before me, there's like a golden stone or something. Oh, it's so easy. Not happening, okay? It's not like that. He went out not knowing where he was going but trusting the one in whom he had called him. Let's look at the next verse. It says, By faith he dwelt in a land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. This is the line of faith that will come down. And we already talked about where, um, where the term or the name of the people group Hebrews come from. We looked at that last week or last time we were here together. And, and, and so we already understand that. And so as we flip back here to the big idea of what we're going to see, chapter 12, 13, 14, 15, and end it with 16, we're going to see this. One big idea, they'll flash it on the screen here. It's, it's promise, problems, and praise. That is the flow of what happens in his life. And I would bet you that if I sat down with you and I began to talk to you, we would begin to chat about our, our, you know, our life of faith, that we would, we, would, we would both come to that conclusion of realizing that God has given us a promise in Jesus Christ. It's yes and amen. And, and, and in that, that, that promises that he has given and the security that I have within him, but there's a whole lot of problems and yet that I still walk through as God's working out the difficulty. And yet when God gets me through a problem in my failure in the moment, what results from that? It is the praise that comes out of our mouth to God. Thank you, God, for being so merciful to me. Thank you, Father, for your grace. Thank you for the work and the promises that you've given to me in Christ. And in Christ that I'm faultless. All of these things. Well, this is, in essence, this is, the, this is what we are seeing through these next several chapters. And so as, as we look at the gigantic storyline that is attached here, I don't want you to go too small in this study. This study is not designed to go too small. I just want you to keep the high level. And the high level, next several chapters, we're going to see the promise repeated many times. We're going to see Abraham in problems, and we're going to see him praising. Then he gets to that place of worship many times within this. And so let's pick up here, verse number five. Here's what it says. Chapter 12, verse number five. It says, Then Abram, he took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired. Uh, note that. And the people whom they had acquired in Haran. And uh, they departed to go to the land of Canaan. And so they came to the land of Canaan. And Abraham, he passed through the land to the place of Shechem. Very key right there. We'll talk in a moment. As far as the terebinth tree of Moreh. And the Canaanites were then in the land. And then the Lord appeared to Abraham and he said, he said, to your descendants, I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. And he moved from there to the mountains east of Bethel and he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and he called on the name of the Lord. And so Abram, he journeyed going on still towards the south. And we'll talk about that in just a second, too. And so we, 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 we've got a, a picture here of seeing the movement in Abraham's life. He's moving a little bit. He, you know, he's, he's left Ur. He's left Haran. Now he's working his way down into Canaan, all of this stuff. So that's awesome to see that. But as he gets into the land, he's like taking it very tentatively. He, he comes to this place, verse number six, he comes to Shechem. Well, what does Shechem mean? Shechem means back or shoulder. Okay, here's the idea. The idea is, is, is that it's like he's slowly taking these steps of faith into the promised land. He's not like going, bam, right into the heart of it, right, right instantaneously. While he's working his way down, he's taking these little steps of faith. And you and I can get that too. Because don't, don't we do that? Don't we often test God? It's like, okay, God's put this on my heart. I'm going to go for it. And, and I'm so brave. But then I get to the air. Well, maybe I should be a little bit more reasonable in my faith now. Maybe I should just take a little thing. Well, I'm going to put a fleece before God. How's that working out? Okay, no, I'm going to do this now. You, you know, oh, so we get the idea. The text gives us the, the, the texture, 
Okay, does that make sense? The text gives us the texture. This is why we study the Bible, so that we can open up and that we can unlock the applications that are attached here. One interpretation, many applications that we can extract from the scriptures. And, and, and just looking at this in a flyover, we note that Shechem, the back, the shoulder in, in, in Canaan, the, the idea is nothing more than this, is, is that he's slowly stepping out into faith. And I think that God loves that. Because what happens? Well, God ends up appearing to Abraham, right? Uh, verse number seven. He, he appeared to Abraham. And in that appearance, he, he goes to this place of affirming the promise to him. So catch that for your Christian walk. That as you take these steps of faith, right? You know, it, 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 it's not always this gigantor step of faith that you're doing. It, 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 it's maybe it's just a little baby step of faith. Awesome. God encourages us in those things. And he's doing that with Abram right here. And I just want you to catch that, okay? And so we find that as he moves forward, we also find this, verse 7 and 8, that, that, that we find Abram in this place where there's been this, this, this promise that was given. God called him out. There was a delay of 15 to 25 years. Okay, that's the problem, okay? Uh, but, but, he, but he starts taking these steps of faith, and now God comes in, and he's, 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 he's uh, encouraging, affirming, and, 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 and blessing, and kind of moving him here. But we still, as he moves through this, we, we immediately come to this place here, verse 7, verse 8, where we find that, that Abram goes to this place where he worships because God had appeared to him. God spoke to him. God was showing him. And where does he do that? Read in your Bible. Verse, at the end of verse number 8, end of verse number 8, he, he did what? He, he, he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel, and he pitched his tent with Bethel, we're at on the west and I on the east. Now, this becomes something that is iconic both for him and for his kids, or should I say kid, okay, in the days to come. What is that? Well, Bethel means house of God. I means house of ruin. And guess where he was at? He was right in the middle of those two places. You know, yes, he was in the land of promise, but what was happening in the land of promise? What was happening is as he was taking those little steps of faith. What, what was happening? Well, he was, man, he was still struggling. He was still wrestling to make sense of all of the movement that God had called him to. And, and, and he's right there. Yes, God appeared. Yes, he, he's worshiping God. Bethel is over here on the west and eyes on the east, okay? House of God, heap of ruins. He's right in the middle. He's right in the middle of that spot. And I think that we can also understand that too. Because, because, you know, our, our spirit is willing, but our flesh is, is weak, right? So we see a very human guy doing the same struggles that you and I go through. We just have the amplification of it drawn out over several chapters here. And, 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 and really, I think that the biblical key to the application is, is that, that we wouldn't see ourselves so much different than what Abraham was. Is that there was times of success, but there was also times of, of great failure. And yet, what does God remember in the annals of, of history, in the halls of faith? Hebrews chapter 11. It was nothing but the good side of what had happened in Abraham's life, Abraham's life at that point. And we can draw upon that. And so we move forward. Uh, now we, we come here uh, at the end of verse number nine. Let me point this out to you because you, I, I'm not sure what your Bible translation says. But in verse number nine, it says, so Abram, he journeyed going on still towards the south. Now, when I see towards the south, it's like, well, I need to know where I'm at, so I don't understand where I'm going south and all this stuff. Well, that sounds great when you're using a compass, but this Hebrew word means something. It's the Negev, okay? What does that mean? He's going out into the desert, and the meaning behind this is it's to be dry. Remember, he was caught between Bethel and I. God had appeared to him. He was taking little steps of faith, but he's caught there in the middle, and he's still kind of wandering down to the south. He's still in this place of, of kind of being dry. Well, what did God do to help him from that? The same thing that he does within our lives, right? You know, maybe, maybe we can look uh, in, into the, uh, to, to the book of Hebrews and maybe we can say that, you know, God likes to chasten us. Why? To increase the virtue within our life. Well, and many times we don't understand that. We think, oh, I'm getting disciplined by God and it's such a painful and it's a bad thing and all that. And, and that's not the point of chastening. The point of chasing is, is, is that it would increase virtue. That, that, that God would bring something good Right? You know, he's, he, he's taking us to this place where, where, where the work is increasing, not diminishing. That's the idea of chastening, okay? That's all for today. Join us for our next broadcast of No Greater Love with Pastor Jeff Kramer, weekdays at 1030 a.m. No Greater Love is an outreach ministry of Westminster Calvary and is supported by listeners like you. If you would like to partner with us, please text any dollar amount to 84321. We would like to personally invite you to join us for our weekly worship services Sundays at 8 or 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. 
We are located in Westminster, Colorado, on the northeast corner of Church Ranch and Wadsworth Parkway, near the Vasa Fitness. If you're not local, tune into the weekly live stream on our web campus, app, Roku, or on Apple TV. Have you downloaded the free Westminster Calvary app yet? You can stay up to date on coming events, join a small group, request prayer, and watch live worship services. Just search Westminster Calvary on your favorite app store today. Lastly, we're a church that's ready to serve you. If we can do so, give us a call at 303-223-4640. And remember, there's no greater love than when Jesus gave up his life for you and me. Thanks and God bless.